Starfield has some insanely powerful weapons and armor, from unique loot to legendary drops and rare finds, all with special perks, ridiculous amounts of damage, and very awesome and unique cosmetics. And in this video, I'm going to take you through many of the best items in the game that I advise you grab as soon as possible to take your playthrough to the next level, because trust me, some of these items are real game changers. The first unique loot we're going to be chasing is one that most people probably know about by now. However, it's what's so unique about it that you probably don't know. To grab this armor set, firstly, you're going to need the Mantis quest in your quest log. This comes from reading a data slate called Secret Outpost. And this data slate is a completely random drop from most enemies in the game. However, primarily it drops from spacer enemies. So just play through the game, you will naturally encounter lots of spacer enemies. And before long, you'll pick up the data slate Secret Outpost. Just read this in your inventory and you will automatically be given the quest Mantis. Now head to Denabola 1B in the Denabola system and fight your way here to the entrance to the lair of the Mantis. I want to keep this video as concise as possible, so I'll let you explore most of it yourself. The only bit I'll show off specifically is when you get to this turret puzzle. All you need to do is walk on the tiles that spell out the word Tyrannus. Alternatively, you can do what I do and just blast all the turrets to oblivion. Now keep progressing down the corridor and eventually Livy will lock you in this room in the hopes of betraying you and stealing the Mantis loot for himself. However, he unfortunately blows himself up. So now that he's gone, we can continue on with our quest. Progress through to the next area, defeat the robots, and then head into this room to claim the Mantis's spacesuit. Now, before you go and interact with the spacesuit, I suggest you create a save, because this is the part which you may not know. What makes the Mantis's suit so unique is that all of the perks on every single part of this suit are completely randomized. So you can keep reloading your save until you get a set of perks that really gel with your build. For instance, when I first found this suit, both the suit itself and I believe it was the pack had increased carry capacity. So without any points in weightlifting, I had such a large carry capacity on basically a base level character. It was fantastic. And before we move on, one more thing I wanted to point out for you. When you do get hold of the Razor Leaf spaceship, even if you're not planning on using it, make sure you head inside and check out all the rooms because there is a huge stash of weapons in here. And also one more advanced tip for you, before you enter the spaceship, switch your game difficulty to very hard because there is a higher likelihood of rare and legendary weapons spawning. And this tip will apply for many of the loot locations in this video. So always keep that in mind. Now that we've done that, let's move on to some of the more juicy ones. Next up, we have got three amazing loot locations that all revolve around the United Colonies faction questline. Progress until the point where you have the War Relics mission, and let's head to the Soul System and progress to the point where you have access to the Red Devil's headquarters. Now, once here, you want to just keep running down until you're all the way at the other end of the room on the ground floor. And here, you can speak to Lieutenant Gualta. Take a look at what he has for sale, and you'll see for this early on in the game, many of his weapons are insanely Military powerful. Again, make sure your game is on very hard difficulty, like I explained in a previous tip, and there's a higher chance of him having some rare weapons, like this very powerful Amped Up Orion. On top of that, the two rare weapons he is guaranteed to have are the Reckless Bombardment, which is this insanely powerful, albeit very expensive, rare heavy weapon, along with some very stylish United Colonies armor sets. But more importantly, the Vampire's Gift, which is a very high capacity, very high rate of fire rare rifle, which even has the med theft ability, which means that there is a chance that humans will drop extra med packs on death. And as we are already talking about the United Colonies questline, progress a few more missions until you have the hostile intelligence mission which sends you to Londinian. Once again, before you travel to Ptolemon 2, make sure you are on very hard difficulty. Once you've done that, progress to the quest marker, 
and as you enter into this building you'll find there is an absolute ton of loot here and if you get lucky some of it may even be rare finds so just go ahead and grab everything you can but that's not even the most important bit once you've finished speaking to the quest npc and you're sent on your way you will have an optional objective to collect your gear as you head to this building, go upstairs first, and there is even more loot upstairs. And then finally, the most juicy bit. Now, if you head downstairs and go inside, you will find the full anti-Xeno legendary set. Exactly as the name suggests, this is insanely good for hunting down beasts and other monstrous aliens. Along with that, there are some really powerful guns in here, and the agent will provide you with another ridiculously powerful weapon and over a thousand ammo to go along with it. And now that you have looted Forward Base 441, you should be kitted up for whatever comes your way. But wait, there's more! This next one is probably the easiest armor set to get in the entire game, and if you rush this early game, it can be so insanely powerful. It isn't legendary or even rare, so it doesn't come with any special buffs, but all you need to do to get the Mark 1 spacesuit is head to the lodge with master lockpicking and pick your way into this display case. Once you're in, you will get the Mark 1 pack, space helmet, and spacesuit. And if you rush this early game, despite the fact it doesn't have any of the awesome perks of legendary gear, it does still have ridiculously good stats. As you can see here, especially when I compare the pack to my current pack, the character you're seeing right now is level 45. So they have insanely good stats and gear, yet some of this armor still nearly compares to the legendary equipment that I've currently got equipped. Just to put that into perspective, if you grab this at around level 5 or 6, you are going to be practically invincible when facing any early game enemies, so this is definitely a set that you want to rush to help get you through the early game. This next unique weapon is tied to a very long but very straightforward questline, and it is definitely one of the more missable on this list. So to start with from the galaxy map, we're going to go all the way to the top right and fast travel to Ixil. Once here, let's pull up the planet map for Ixil 2 and land at the Ilios Retreat. After witnessing an argument, head into the big building directly in front of you, up these stairs and into the counselor's office to meet Sloane. Follow Sloane's orders and progress through the quest line until you have brought the kidnapped worker back to the retreat. Now you'll be sent to the kidnapper's hideout. Make your way through, taking out all of the turrets and robots in sight. Once you get to the end where you need to pick up the corrupted slate, there should also be some other juicy loot in this room, in the science crate and the weapon crate. Whilst you're here, don't forget to lockpick this door, because inside is a bit more loot and a safe containing some ammo, money and digipicks. Now report back with your findings and discuss with the staff the best course of action. The unique weapon you get at the end of this quest chain is called the Peacemaker. So I believe to receive this reward, you must successfully negotiate with the kidnappers. Do not engage in combat. With that said, head back to the hideout and wait for the trackers. Now that they're here, you may want to quick save to make sure you successfully persuade them. There's no need for unnecessary bloodshed. That's so. What? That's... that's not what this is. We're tough. Well, they have shaken off a lot so far. Fine. We'll leave the retreat alone, can we? Once again, head back to Sloane, and she will ask you to speak to Nevin as well. Nevin asked to speak to you. In private. Now you'll be sent to Aquila to meet Raisha Lance, the CEO of the Rado Firearms. Make sure you are polite and accommodating during this conversation. And that must make you our guest. You don't have anything to fear from me. Now, you may already know who I am. Raisha Lance, CEO Laredo Firearms. Now, 
Was there anything else you wanted to talk And finally, about? all of your hard work has paid off and has been rewarded with the Peacemaker Power Pack, Spacesuit, and Weapon. And if we take a look at them, even though the weapon is only an epic, it has all six mods attached with some great skills. And even better, it synergizes with the spacesuit, increasing its damage and allowing you to blend into your environment and sneak. A great reward for a great questline. Now we'll move on to probably my favorite weapon on this whole list. To get this next legendary weapon, just progress through the undercover Crimson Fleet questline courtesy of the UC Sysdef. Eventually you'll get to the mission The Eye of the Storm. And right near the end here, along with lots of other loot, you will be able to grab the Revenant. This is probably the best weapon in the game to give to one of your companions. Because unlike you, they will never run out of ammo, so they can absolutely destroy almost every enemy in the game, especially because of its lacerate effect. As you can see, this weapon shoots so fast, it is an absolute machine, and it looks stunning as well. This is a fantastic weapon, and one that will carry you through many, many encounters. And as we're talking about the UC Sysdef questline, Let's take a look at what happens if you side with the Crimson Fleet during the final mission. To give you a brief rundown, firstly you'll need to defend all the batteries and clear up the UC Sysdef fleet before you can then finally board the Vigilance. This is an extremely fun series of fights, where you get to interact with every single one of the people that you have rescued or worked with in some capacity during your time with the Crimson Fleet. And honestly, it's far more satisfying and rewarding than siding with UC, because you don't get this level of companionship and interaction with anyone at the UC. It feels like this is the route they wanted you to choose, because this is so satisfying and such an amazing mission. Anyway, as we are nearing Commander Ikande, I'd just like to say if you are enjoying this content and you're not already subscribed, doing so helps out the channel so much more than you could know, and it is entirely free. So if you would subscribe to the channel, that would be absolutely amazing of you. And of course, if you're enjoying the video, please leave a like and a comment as well. And now that we are at Commander Akande, make sure you choose to attack him. Do not negotiate. Doing this is the only way that you will be able to loot his weapon the unfair advantage. Even though this is only a rare pistol, it has got a lot going for it. Its burst damage is insane, being able to do around 600 damage in a matter of a second or two. It's also a nearly fully modified gun with the very rare radioactive stat on it as well. Do not overlook this gun just because it's only rare. As the name suggests, this really can give you an unfair advantage. It is very powerful. And now that you have sided with the Crimson Fleet and betrayed the entirety of the United Colonies, let's forget any of that happened and do something a bit more light-hearted. The next legendary loot we're going for requires you to be near the end of the main campaign questline on the quest Entangled. When you finally get to this part of the mission where you have to disengage the power interlocks, to receive this reward, you do not want to disengage any of the power interlocks. Completely ignore this objective. The first thing you want to do is go around this world, killing all of the aliens, and then switch to the other version of the world where the disaster didn't happen, and do the same thing. Keep all of the locks engaged, and just go around clearing out all of the robots and all of the turrets. Once you have double-checked that all the enemies are dead in both worlds, now you want to find the control room here. As you can see, the world where the disaster didn't happen, you cannot access the control room. So switch back to the other world, enter the control room, clear out the aliens here, and then switch back to the other world and clear out the robots. So now this room is clear in both worlds as well. At this point, in the quote-unquote good world, you are supposed to be able to find Raphael's dead body on the floor. And on his body will be some instructions you need to find the secret ending for this quest. Of course, Starfield is a bit buggy, and that body didn't spawn for me. However, luckily, the solution to this quest isn't procedurally generated, so if you encounter the same bug, I can still talk you through what you need to do now. 
The next bit you can do in any order, you want to go and interact with the lab control computer just here, and you want to start degaussing. Initiate the degaussing, and it will tell you the switches that need degaussing. Now you want to go and find them, and you just want to turn them off and back on again. It really is as simple as that. So in one world, it says I need to degauss switches four and six, so I'll find them, I'll turn them off, and I'll turn them back on again. Then go and do the same in the other version of the world. Just remember, you'll obviously need to do a bit of switching back and forth to be able to do it in the world without the disaster, because you won't be able to just freely walk through the door. Once you've done that in both worlds, just go and rerun the degaussing again, and it will confirm that you have definitely degaussed all of the switches, and that section is now complete. Next up, you now want to calibrate the frequencies. So head into frequency calibration and initiate. You'll now be able to set the output frequency for both worlds. In the world where only Raphael is still alive with all of the aliens, set it to 24 gigahertz. Now use the distortion to switch back to the other world and set the calibration here to 40 gigahertz. If you have done this correctly, it will now say intake waveform is stable. The last thing you want to do, and you can do this in either world, is head all the way to the other side of the room and interact with the primary calibration control panel just here. This will merge both realities and you have successfully saved everyone. For doing so, you have been rewarded with the Nishina armor set. And if we take a look at it, these stats are amazing. This is an insanely tanky armor set with some great skills attached to it. And we've even got the helmet to match. Let's finish off the video with a few more pieces of legendary loot that are far easier to obtain than this one. When I say easier, I don't necessarily mean quicker, because the next suit requires you to complete the whole entire video game. However, when you do, you will be rewarded with the Starborn Spacesuit Astra. Just look at this beast. 149 in all defenses and 50 resistance in all resistances. This is an absolute beast of a spacesuit. And if you didn't know, each time you complete the game, I believe up to New Game Plus 10, you will be granted another upgraded version of the Starborn spacesuit. And some of them become incredibly powerful and very, very awesome looking. So not that I'm advising you to just beeline it through the game every single time, but some of the best armor in the game you can get is simply by just completing the game again and again and again. And you're also rewarded with this absolutely epic starship as well, which is definitely nothing to sniff at. Next up, let's take a look at a nifty little side quest on Aquila. Once you get to Aquila to start this side mission, head into the main town until you see Shepard's General Store on your left. No need to go in, head round the side, and up the stairs on your left you'll encounter this conversation. Wait for the three NPCs to finish speaking, and then you can kick off the mission by speaking to Davis. There is very little direction I need to give you here, it is super straightforward and very short. So progress through mission 1 until you unlock the second mission, False Positives. Now you just want to grab any stool or chair and wait for 24 hours to kick off False Positives. Once again, as soon as you've completed that mission, head to your nearest rest area and rest up for a further 24 hours to start the final part of the mission, Leader of the Pack. At this point, you will be tasked with going on patrol with Davis and taking out a particularly powerful Ashtar. At this point, unfortunately, the quest did bug out for me, and no matter what I do, I cannot get Davis to move, and therefore I cannot progress this quest. And trust me, I have tried all sorts. However, for your benefit, here is a screenshot of the quest reward, the Despondent Assassin Legendary Rifle. This is ridiculously powerful for sniping humans in particular, with a really decent rate of fire for a sniper rifle, and lots of additional bonuses and mods. This next section isn't really a particular weapon that you can miss, However, what it is, is some very powerful vendors that you definitely want to go and periodically check out throughout your playthrough. 
I'm not sure if your difficulty settings will affect shop inventory. However, as you're going to be encountering no enemies in these areas, I suggest you stick the difficulty on maximum just in case it does affect it. And firstly, we're going to start in New Atlantis and head to the residential district. Then come over this way and go into the Centurion Arsenal. This vendor will specifically sell the Marksman's AA-99 rare rifle from the very start of the game. And as you can see, it's got a decent mag, a high rate of fire, really good damage for that rate of fire, but most importantly, seven mods and a special attribute. Once you have the money, this is a fantastic semi-auto rifle that you should pick up as early on in your playthrough as possible. As you can see, this vendor does also have a few other really powerful weapons, such as this mag shear with a really respectable damage stat considering how insanely fast this thing fires. And as always, you can rest up at the chairs for a couple of days until the stock replenishes and check it out again to see if she has anything even better in stock. However, finally, so much better than this shop are two shops side by side in Neon. So for this, we want to find Neon in the Volley system, head to Volley Alpha and travel down to Neon Core. Turn around and on your left, you will see the Trade Authority and Neon Terminal. Both of these shops have a chance of having ridiculously powerful weapons in them. Straight away, in regards to raw damage output, even though there is a rare shotgun here, the Boom Boom, the Assassin's Advanced Shotty is perhaps even better. It has a smaller mag, but just look at that damage. It can pump out thousands of damage in mere seconds. As we take a look through the inventory, there are some god tier weapons in here. For being just a common item, this modified refined Kadama is absolutely insane. And then as I say, you can go next door, rest up and do the exact same thing. Both of these shops have a chance of having some insanely powerful weapons in them. And if you get lucky, one of them has a chance of stocking the Varun Star Shard, which as you can see from this screenshot is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. So it's definitely worth resting up a few times and hoping that this spawns in either of their inventories. If anyone knows of an easier way to get hold of either the Varun Star Shard or the Varun Implicator, please let me know because I believe these two shops are the only two spawn points and both of these weapons are so ridiculously powerful that I strongly recommend you get your hands on at least one of them. And that is it for part one of the rarest and best weapons and armor in Starfield. Please let me know if you enjoyed this and if you would like me to seek out and demo some more for you. But in the meantime, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.